Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the uh, Adroit Technologies webinar series. Um, the series is called Adroit Project Engineering. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody to this, uh, this webinar session. Um, part one, uh, creating a new configuration. Uh, I'm just doing a quick sound check. Uh, can everybody please just sound off in the comments if they can hear me? Um, I just uh, while we're waiting for those comments to come through, I'd just like to welcome everybody and thank them for, for joining us. Um, this is the first in a series of episodes about, uh, about project engineering with the Droid Smart UI. Uh, just a quick introduction on my side. Um, for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Dean Gibson. Um, my title at Adroit is a um, support and commercial uh, in, uh, support engineer. Um, typically, my, my role at Adroit, um, for those of you that haven't uh, dealt with me before, is I'm a solutions expert um, with the product that we support. Uh, pr primarily, it's the Adroit Smart UI Skater. Um, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to, I'm going to show you how I kickstart a project. Um, the project I'm going to be basing these uh, configuration on is our Adroit uh, uh, certification exam. Uh, what I'll be doing is, is I'll be creating a new project within the support uh, uh, for this uh, exam. And the next couple of episodes within this um, project engineering will be how I go about creating that uh, certification exam. Um, if everybody is happy to continue, it's a, it's a fairly short uh, little webinar session here. So nothing, nothing too complex. Um, the idea behind these uh, series is that they will be aimed at new users of our software but I'm hoping that the advanced users and the uh, the guys that have worked with the project will be able to maybe pick up some tips and also work with the product itself you know it's learning to work with the product itself all right I think we're going to get started so what we're going to be doing is, is I'm just going to be opening up our Adroit Config Smart UI Editor, Adroit Smart UI Editor. Um, for those of you that are interested, um, the version that I'll be working in is 10.041. Um, 10.05 is currently uh, undergoing testing and hopefully we should be releasing that soon as well. Uh, but for those of you that want to be able to work along and to do the engineering themselves, uh, we'll be using 10.041. Um, inside the, uh, the, the the configurator, the place that you'll find your, your version is down here at the bottom. Um, you can see the, uh, if you can see my mouse down at the bottom there, um, that's where we'll check our version. So a lot of guys will tend to panic when they, when they come in here and they open this up for the first time. Everybody should just take a nice calm breath, me included so that we can work nicely through the configuration itself. There are a number of things that we'll, we'll be creating and, and working with today. Um, first of all, though, is we're going to be creating a new configuration. So what that means is uh, inside of Droit, we have a file structure typically that we will work with. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just quickly going to uh, add in a Unfortunately, I'm, I'm having a, a slight, slight issue with my, uh, my desktop display, so I have to add these in manually here. Um, so if everybody can just bear with me a little bit. Um, but typically, what this will be is, is that um, inside your, if you open up your file explorer, you'll be able to negotiate or, or navigate, I should rather say, to a file structure that a droid creates when it creates a new configuration. Um, the configuration itself is stored. Uh, well, let me just quickly pull this up here. Uh, I'll just quickly open this guy up.
So what you'll see here is a, is a window that I've, I've opened here, File Explorer. Um, Adroit, what it does is on your C drive, you'll see that there's a folder in there called Program Data. Inside Program Data, we'll have a folder structure under Adroit Technologies, and then Adroit, and then we move on to our configuration. And you'll see inside this folder here, all of my projects that I create and I work on. Uh, most of these configurations are based around um, certain clients, certain projects that I've worked with. Um, you'll see a lot of them in here. Um, for example, we have a folder structure in here that I call ADR production. This is a configuration. This is our production server. Uh, this is where we host a lot of our IoT uh, equipment um, for our clients on this particular little product over here on this folder structure. Uh, what happens is, is inside it, if we open up, I'm just going to go and open up ABC Spice. You'll see inside there we have default folders that are created for our project files that we'll be working with with our new configuration. All right, so currently we don't have a configuration that we're going to be working with, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go and create a new one. Uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, if we can just get rid of that file there for us, and we're back on our Adroit Smart UI Editor, Config Editor. Um, the Config Editor itself is broken up into a, um, a number of areas. Uh, the default area, you'll see, um, we'll have a little uh, navigation structure on the side as we click on things. So that navigation structure will change. And we can move back to where we were originally while well, either collapsing or then working on it. Alternatively, we can click on different areas on the uh, on the right hand side. For example, here's my agent server configuration that we're looking at. Um, so we can move around our configuration and that's how we navigate around inside our config editor. Uh, the first area we're going to go along and work with is something called the configuration. Uh, for those of you that are opening this area up for the first time, typically what you'll find inside here is this little allow multiple configurations will be unchecked. Uh, this will give you a blank area. Uh, when we check it on for the first time, uh, the first configuration that you'll see is your default configuration. So I'm just going to uh, apply that quickly, that configuration. So now my, my setup has been configured for that. The default and this is all will be where most people will work and create but because I work or we work on different configurations uh, we want to go ahead and we want to create a new structure and a new project structure for our, our new project that we're going to be working with so the way I do that is we're going to go along and we're going to click on there's a, a little uh, button here on the side next to that apply it's a little green button. Um, just what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start up a little application so we can do some zooming in here. Let's just give me a sec. Let me open that guy up and I'm just going to launch. I'll zoom it. Okay. So what we'll see here is we have a inside this area. Um, if we can see it, I don't think I don't think the zoom appears to be working. Um, uh, the zoom does not appear to be working. Well, that's not a problem. So what we're going to do is, is down at the bottom, you guys will see that you have a select configuration and apply button and then a little green circle with a plus button on it and then a little garbage can next to it. So this garbage can will remove any configuration that I select. So if I'm going to change my configuration to demo here quickly, and then if I go along and I click on this, button this remove button that'll then go ahead and remove that configuration from my machine uh, be careful with this button as it'll remove all of those project files for this particular configuration that i've selected in there um, the package uh, adroit will not allow you to remove an active configuration so you'll see currently that we've got an active configuration above that select which is set to default so if i try and remove it It'll tell me that it cannot be removed because it is currently an active configuration. Uh, one of the other things you'll see in this is that I've also set this particular configuration is set to full mode. 
Uh, Droit comes in two flavors. Uh, it's a full mode and an HMI style mode, which is a stripped down version or a light version of a Droit. Um, I think most people will be working with the full mode. All right, well, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and click on this, uh, this little add button over here. It now prompts me for a name, uh, which I can add in here. Um, just while we're... Looks like uh, we've got quite a few chats coming in, I, I see there as well. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and give it a name. Um, this name that I'll be giving this um, will tie back to a uh, project that I have defined. Um, like I said, I'm using the uh, Droid Config uh, uh, certification exam. The Droid certification exam. You can uh, access that exam by just contacting us and we'll send you the, uh, the documentation required to create it. Um, Going through that documentation, it'll prompt us for uh, uh, um, different aspects of the project, what its requirements are. Um, one of the things I've got in, in my requirements is I need to define a configuration. And this one that I'm going to do is called batching. Um, we're going to be using the, the good old OPC batching uh, server. Um, for those of you that have been on training or worked with Adroit, the demo projects in Adroit will know this quite well. It's quite simple. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a name. Um, what I can then do is I can specify whether this project must be based on an existing configuration. Uh, I can check that on. Uh, and then in a drop-down box, you will then see the, uh, the configuration um, those of you, unfortunately, we're having some technical difficulties. Our drop-down boxes don't appear to be working, um, but never mind. We're not really interested in doing that. I'm going to create a base project. Uh, the other things that we can also do inside here is we can specify whether that project has default projects, uh, which we can add or remove as required. Uh, I'm going to leave mine on. Uh, typically, in most projects, that I work with, I will create blank configurations and then set those configurations up as I as I, uh, I require for my clients. Um, but in our case, for this one, we're just going to leave our defaults in there so that we can work with them. Uh, the other one that it also refers to is a uh, including our default data sources. Um, these are our connections to our different where we're going to be pulling our data in from. Um, we're going to leave that. The default data source we're interested in there is one is the Adroit data source. Um, the Adroit data source connects by default to your local agent server. So that'll create a connection to your local agent server when you start that up. Uh, again, if you're creating an enterprise type solution, you might not want those data sources. You might want to create your own. And within this environment, we can go ahead and do that. We can specify whether we want those. But for our purposes, we're going to have a default graphic form. All right. Next, moving on, is which configuration mode we'd like to use. Uh, I did mention this earlier. Uh, up at the top, you'll see my active configuration is currently set to full mode. I'm going to leave mine on full. For those of you that are licensed for HMI, this is where you'll specify your HMI configuration. Okay. I see I'm, I'm, a, I'm going a little bit too fast here. I'm just looking at the stream there. All right, so we've got the HMI clicked on. And now I go back to full mode. Um, and we can, uh, once we've got that done, uh, what we can then do is I can go ahead and then click on the OK button. Um, this is gonna, this will take a few minutes uh, to do. Uh, what Adroit is now doing is, is it's going ahead and it's actually creating that configuration, that file structure for us in the back end. Um, once we get the, uh, we'll, we'll, there'll be a little message box that'll pop up. Um, and uh, we'll then be able to refresh and have a look at our ex Windows Explorer. Um, and then we'll be able to see that our, our configuration files are there. Uh, while we're waiting for that to happen, um, 
just like to find out uh, if there's any questions or comments in the uh, in the comment section there. Let's just have a look quickly. Let's pull it up. Uh, I see we've got a, a lot of a lot of guys uh, sending their uh, their mornings and their hazards on the the chat. Good morning to everybody that I haven't said good morning to. Um, all right. So the config files, I've got a little message box that's popped up. Um, okay, I see we've got a quick question there um, from one of our uh, participants. Um, the HMI section um, in your uh, is a is a basically a light version of a droid. Um, what we've done is is it's a uh, um, the price point is a bit lower than a full version. Um, and there's also to, to, to facilitate that low price, we've, we've reduced functionality within the product itself. Uh, what we can do is, is uh, if you're interested more in the HMI, I would recommend having a look at our uh, website, um, alternatively contacting one of your sales representatives or even the support department, the Droid support department, and they'll be able to fill you in a little bit more on it. Okay, I've just got a message that says that my config files have uh, been created and my properties have been set to their default values. Uh, I click the OK button and you'll see that everything changes there. My active configuration is now called batching. It's full mode. Um, if I open up my uh, if I open up my Windows Explorer now, um, you'll see inside there that we should have a new folder structure inside there called batching. Um, one of the things I like to do with this particular folder is I like to go and create additional folder structures in here. One of my favorite ones is the um, new folder to create in here is the documentation folder. Um, now, documentation, don't let my terrible spelling affect anybody. I hope that's right. That is correct. It's a blank folder. Why I create this particular folder structure in here um, is that I like to go ahead and I like to put all my documents that relate to this particular project in this folder structure. Uh, what happens then is, is when I do a backup of my project, it'll then grab everything that's inside of this particular folder structure and zip it up. So some guys like to keep PLC, uh, PLC projects in here as well, uh, things, things of that nature. Um, I'm going to go, I've created my, my documentation, so I'm just going to jump out to where I've got my documentation that I've created for this. Um, you'll see it's all sitting in, inside another folder here. I'm just going to copy them across quickly. And I'm going to open up my batching, open up my documentation, and I'm just going to go ahead and paste those files inside the inside my batching uh, project under documentation. Okay, I see we've got uh, 10 minutes left on the clock here. So we're gonna, we're gonna start wrapping things up. Um, coming back to our, coming back to our configurator. A um, few things that I wanna be able to do inside you as well before I start anything. Um, I wanna, just change a few of my uh, configurations for this particular setting. Um, anything I change now will relate directly to this active configuration. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to go to my agent server configuration uh, under agent server. Um, inside here, we'll see we've got a project name of a droid. I'm just going to go ahead once once my, my stream is caught up. Agent server configuration. There it is. Should be popping up now. Um, you'll see inside that we've got a server project name. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to give it my project name a new name. I'm going to give it the same as my my configuration, um, and I'm going to call this batch underscore zero one for my agent server name. Um, the reason I do this is uh, this project requires me to have um, m multiple agent servers. Um, working in tandem in clustered situations. So I'll need to be able to rename my uh, servers, give them specific names. So in this case, 
My agent server name is uh, batch underscore zero one. Um, the secondary server will then be batch underscore zero two. All right. Uh, next thing we're going to do is, is if I scroll in my WGP file path here, if we scroll all the way to the end, um, for those of you that can see it, uh, under my configuration, you'll see there's the full path to that configuration folder that we created. And inside there, we're going to create a new WGP file called batching.wgp. And we're happy with that name. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go along and go to my driver configuration. Um, I have a list of uh, protocol drivers available to me. Um, inside the uh, inside it uh, the driver config um, I've already created a number of devices in here these are common these devices are, are common to all projects all configurations so if you do create a, a device in one configuration it is available in other multiple configurations um, under the OPC client protocol driver um, that's the protocol I'm going to be working with. I've created a device called Batch already. Um, if we open him up, I don't know if that won't pop through, but I've configured this particular device to connect to my local Batch OPC server. All right, and I am configured. There are obviously a lot of other settings we can go ahead and change. I configure this as, as per our client's request. Um, but for now, these are all the configuration that we need for our particular particular configuration. And I hope uh, I hope everybody got a bit of bit of interesting things out of there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just turn us over to the uh, the comment section for a bit. If, uh, see if anybody's got any uh, got any comments. Um, wait for the, the comment sections to pull up and then yeah guys if you have any have any questions um, regarding uh, adding and creating a new configuration um, I'd like to hear it um, as I said one of the the great benefits of this particular um, function of adroit this configuration is that I can work with multiple projects without there being bleed over from one into the other uh, I can define look and feels per per configuration um, graphic forms can be unique to those configurations as well or I can use graphic forms that I've created in previous configurations in my new one um, and then one of the other benefits is of course is when I back up my uh, my configuration all of that configuration then is captured for me and I can transfer that to a machine that has the exact same operating system and setup is very important that uh, those machines when you restore a configuration those your operating systems etc are the same as your uh, your original um, process all right um i'm looking at the the comment section i i don't see any chats coming through uh any questions coming through so I guess I'm really good at this this webinar demoing stuff, uh, guys. I'm I'm glad that you were able to join us. Um, we will be leaving the I will be leaving the stream going for a little bit um, to uh, to see if you can if there's any more questions that come through. Um, Performance anyway, I see we've got a, can the AS and project name be the same? No, the AS and project name must not be the same. Um, they're used in different, it's, it's in different contexts. So a, a, a project name will typically be used across multiple agent servers. Um, um, on the agent servers themselves, you'll need to have a unique name for each agent server that belong to a specific uh, um, a specific uh, project. Um, so if you want agents to share information, they need to be the same name. 
the project names must be the same. Uh, genre, yes, uh, performance anywhere. Um, that will be one of our future videos, I'm sure. Um, it's not on the slate at the moment, um, but I'm sure we can slot it in. Uh, it is a, a great product. Um, and uh, we're, we're actually using it quite successfully in a, in a few of our newer applications. Um, obviously, with everybody being one of our big things that we're finding is, is with people being away from the office, you know, not being in the office and not being on the plant. They want to be able to check. And we wanted a light client and that performance anywhere really fills that gap quite nicely for that. Uh, yes, the backup of um, Richard's uh, backup of a droid function. Yes, um, uh, the backup isn't a droid function. It is a function of smart UI only. Um, so if you are running classic, that backup uh, does um, uh, doesn't work. That function doesn't work in the old classic uh, package. But in the smart UI, that backup function is is uh, is important. Um, Rudy, I see, yes, um, obviously um, worrying about hard drive crashes um, when you lose everything is, is obviously important. Um, we need to have, regarding, you know, hard drive crashing and that type of thing, we need to take a wider view of the infrastructure around it, a more, uh, let's say, a holistic view, if you will, um, of the, uh, of the, uh, of your product, um, I would recommend um, looking at a, um, a clustered hard drive. Uh, 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 um, what do they call it now? Uh, where we, we we clone our drives. That's one way of getting around it. Um, um, also, making sure that your machine is on um, UPS is obviously uh, vital. Um, one of the the leading causes of hard drive failure is power um, and that's not just loss of power but unclean power um, a lot of guys will do is they'll put a, a gen set in and some of these gen sets aren't great and they're the power or even if the utilities that you're getting from your municipality or, or your, your power supplier is not great it's not clean uh, sparks in it it will generate issues on your machine hardware failures etc so it is highly recommended that we uh, that we have um, uh, UPSs and the like, and obviously we make sure that we have a backup regime as well for our hot software and hardware. Hardware does fail, and it's just the nature of our beast. Okay, um, let's have a look here. What else have we got? Is configuration of a Droid 10 similar to a Droid 8? Uh, genre, yes. Um, a Droid 10 and a Droid 8, the configuration files are very similar. Um, obviously, as we add new functionality to our product that does require a new configuration that does come across um, so typically you can quite easily move from an adroit 8 to an adroit 10 system um, i know that uh, we do we have bumped heads with that um, really i'm sure can sound off in the comments uh, but we were able to come right with that and, and fix the problem there with them um, but typically it is a seamless migration from a adroit 8 to a adroit 10 Obviously, if we want to move back to a Droid 8, that then becomes an impossibility uh, due to the fact that it is not compatible. Back, uh, that backwards compatibility does not, or I should say forwards compatibility, is not supported. Uh, can you give a new configuration in a real world project? Uh, I can. Um, so typically, a, a, a real a configuration in a real world, any project that you start. Um, would have to be a new configuration, Bruce. Um, a real world project, I think, if I can just off the top of my head, I would typically say, look at long at a water utility. Um, I have uh, a number of clients that I deal with in the water industry, and there is a lot of bleed over between configurations. Um, so obviously we have to take into account uh, uh, um, IP of the client, you know, are you, can you share those graphics or those configurations with each other? Um, most, most people I'm, I'm sure, you know, are quite happy to do that. Uh, a lot of SRs, system integrators, will also have um, similar configurations. They specialize in, in industries. Um, so another example of that would be belts and conveyors or material handling in our, in South Africa's mining industry. 
Um, we have, uh, there are guys that do create configurations and then share those configurations across, across their different projects and, and they create new configurations for each client. Uh, next project in a fold in the roots. Okay, Marius, let's have a read here. I have an existing classic adroit. The project is in a folder in the root. I'll need to move the project to program data, a joint configuration folder before I convert to smart. Um, your classic adroit configuration can stay in its original uh, 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 root directory if you, if you so desire. Obviously, the backing up uh, um, of that project will then, uh, uh, you know, that won't, when we back up, we will obviously then need to configure the backup uh, to take into account that your routing is, has changed um, and those settings can be done in your system backup folders um, and you can add uh, those routes to it um, for backupping. Um, however, converting to a true smart UI project where we're using the con uh, 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 conversion, um, I would recommend getting in contact with our support department around the process there. Um, there is quite obviously the, the biggest problem there is our pathing and making sure that all our paths link up to the existing and the new files. Uh, Voter, if you select a different active project, does it automatically load the correct WGP file and graphic forms, data sources, or do you need to change? No, um, Voter, you, the, 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 that's one of the, the, the beauties of this particular configuration is that uh, we save those those pathing and those things in the each configuration. Um, so the graphic forms, the WGP files, all of that will be loaded according to uh, how it was configured. Um, so in my configuration, you saw I had a whole bunch of different configurations in it. All I needed to do was is just say I'm um, uh, today I'm working with the uh, the batch configuration, and then tomorrow I wish to work with uh, um, another client. Um, uh, water utilities, for example, I will just go along, select that configuration, apply it, and it will load that client's uh, uh, WGP file and graphic forms and data source, etc., as you mentioned in it. All right, guys. Um, um, I'd like to thank everybody uh, for participating. Um, I'm going to, to sign off. Um, uh, thanks everybody for participating. Um, again, if you have any any questions, uh, please feel free to contact our support department. Um, you can get a hold of us through our website, so droidtechnologies.co.za. Um, we also have uh, you can contact me directly. Um, my my email is dng at droid.co.za. Um, um, you can contact me through that that email or again through our website. Um, our next uh, next stream, I, I believe Sam is uh, our, our guys have set up a, a, a new uh, web stream for tomorrow. Uh, that starts at the same time, eleven o'clock. Um, I'm sure our marketing people have sent out the mails. Um, uh, if we have a look here. I'm just looking at our marketing stream here, and uh, I believe it starts, yes, 23rd. Uh, the topic will be demo and discussion on the MQT and M2M uh, protocols, both very exciting protocols um, in our IoT offering. Uh, we're doing quite a, quite a lot of work around them, and uh, hopefully uh, you guys will be as excited about those, those two new protocols as I am. Um, and yeah. Thanks everybody for joining and uh, hope to chat to you soon uh, when our next topic comes up. Thanks guys.